Good evening. I'm a little early, I guess, about an hour early. Um, normally, I, we do this at 6, but I got dinner waiting on me. Um, uh, so I know it's 5 o'clock. This will replay, so I'm not worried about people not seeing it. Um, we're gonna, I, I wish we could be together, obviously. Um, that would be better, but uh, we can't. So uh, we're just going to ride this out, and, and it's going to get better. We're praying that it gets better. It's going to get better. Um, remember to pray for those that have come down the prayer chain. Um, continually be in prayer for that and just for the situation and for those that are in it and there's a lot of stuff going on you know a lot of people are doing different things so um just be in prayer for all of them so uh, we finished up the first chapter of james last week and only took three weeks um so <laughs> we're going into the second chapter of james tonight um looking at between james uh, chapter 2 verse 1 through 13 uh we'll read that through and then we'll go over uh the points that, that get brought up in there and some stuff that goes along with it. All right, so James chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Suppose someone comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor person in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the one wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the one who is poor, you stand there, or sit on the floor by my feet, have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture... Love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law yet stumbles on just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said you shall not commit adultery also said you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery but you do commit murder, you've become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law and that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. It starts out, it's talking about favoritism, and, and, and one thought that, that just jumps out is consistency is key. It's how we are consistent with one another, how we are consistent um, in how we treat people. I thought of it, I, I may have, some of you have heard this story and some of you may not. When I worked, I used to work at banks, I was a... Um, I started out as a teller, and I wish I had stayed a teller, but I didn't. Uh, I went into sales and, and, and service at the desk. And I had a customer come in one time um, and, and had a problem with scout. I did the best I could to 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 um, take care of that problem. I'm trying to think of a good intelligent word to use there, but it's not coming to my mind. Uh, but we're trying to take care of this problem, and, and it's not going to his satisfaction. And I'm, you know, I'm doing all I can being very polite. And, and finally, he says the words, Do you know who I am? Do you know how much money I have with this bank? I sat back, and I knew I did know the gentleman. Um, I, I dealt with him before and really never been a problem. And he wasn't, I mean, he's just upset that his problem didn't go away this time. But also had set up an account for his daughter. It's how actually he and I met is in, in setting up an account for his daughter. And she happened to come into the bank. I said, well, I said, there's your daughter right there. He said, yeah. I said, sir, I'm doing the best I can for you. I said, but should I be treating you better, is what you're saying, than, than somebody who doesn't have much with the bank? And that's the case, then I shouldn't be treating your daughter very well, correct? I said, she has less money in the bank, yet she receives the same level of service and, and same level of services from us as you do. Shouldn't that be the way it is? I said, I'm doing the absolute best. And it really caught his attention. He said, okay, well, I get it. Um, and he kind of backed off of that. But that's what we do with favoritism. Do you know who I am? Um, we're not called to we're not called to treat everybody like they're less. We're not tried to call to treat anybody like they're more. We're called to treat people the same. Uh, and in that time, in that in, in that was a practice of, of the Jews in the synagogue, is is those who were more well off would sit to the front. They'd sit closer to the law, and everybody else who was considered less than and less would have to sit towards the back. Um, you know, and, and that's, 
That's just kind of how it went. It's different in church, and everybody wants to sit on the back row. <laughs> but, but then people want to sit on the front row. We can't be treating people differently just based on their circumstances. As you go into the next section there, that's just that, that first little be- that beginning there. You know, we, we don't treat people different. In, in verse 5, he says, you know, Listen, my brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom? And he, and he talks about the rich, and it, it looks like he just doesn't like the rich there. And that's not... That's not what he's talking about at all. Um, the ones he is talking about, and, and we're talking about, it's nothing wrong with being rich, but it's being rich at the, at the cost of others. By You become rich by exploiting other people, by exploiting um, their needs and where they are. But basically, you climb the ladder by stepping on everybody behind you. It's not really a ladder. You're just stepping on people to get farther up. Again, that's not how it's supposed to be, and it goes right back to what he's talking about is you love everybody. You love everybody as you love yourself. That's the commandment that's given. So it's not a problem with being rich. It's a problem with how you got there and, and the exploitation of other people, if that's the way that happened. You know, again, you're not following that, not having favoritism and, and the way that Christ had shown people, the way, the way that Christ lived out and lived the example in front of people. And, and, and it's, you know, the advantage of the poor, there is an advantage in that, I, I would say. Um, and it goes back to Matthew chapter 5 in the Beatitudes. The first thing it says is, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those, basically, who know that they need God. Um, it is so easy when we are content and, 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 and everything is going our way and, and all our needs are taken care of that we begin to fall out. And say, oh, I've got this. I can, I can handle this. And that, that wonderful word, I, comes into it. Instead of looking at God and saying you, because God is the one who has blessed us with it. And so that that for the poor that they know, they know they have to depend on God every day for everything. They're going to work and they're going to do the best they can. And they just have to have faith that God is going to provide for them and what they need as they go along. And so there is an advantage in that. I mean, I, I'm always constantly blown away by stories of people in, in other countries and you know, I, I, I've talked to, I've never got to go on a mission trip. It's just not been something I've been called to do yet. I may yet still be called to do that. Um, but those who've come back and they go to countries that are that are less fortunate than where we live, and, and they're the ones who were changed so much more <laughs> probably than, than those they helped. And then those they helped really appreciated and, and, and needed it. The mission was, was, was great and, and did wonderful things. But the change in themselves, when we start looking at other people's, to hear stories, and you know, from the Gideon, we had a Gideon service not too awful long ago, and to hear those stories of, of people who are so just overwhelmed that they get a copy of, of the Word of God. People in lesser circumstances, we, we sometimes forget how very blessed, even in the midst of this time when we're not getting to do the things we want to do, and, and there's some financial stresses and different things going on, and health stresses and, and such, we forget how very fortunate we are how very prosperous a place that we live in. And sometimes in that prosperity, we can forget to depend upon God. So blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who have a little bit less um, because they, they know what it is that, that to hold on to God. There's a song, and it's a very old song. Um, well, it's old to me, uh, by Stephen Curtis Chapman on his first or second album. So that's a long time ago. But it said, his strength is perfect. And I'm sure it's a Bible verse and I don't know where it is. But his strength is perfect when our strength is gone. It's, it's when we realize that, that we really don't have any anything. And that it is Christ. Uh, my verse of the day is, you know, I, I am crucified to Christ. I realize that I'm, I'm, it's basically Paul saying, I realize I'm dead. It's Christ living in me. That, that I'm nothing. I'm less than nothing. Christ is everything. And so that's where that comes in. And that is a, as I say, that's that's a good thing for the poor. That's that's where you know we should treat them better. <laughs> you know? They've got it down. So let's treat everybody the same. Let's be consistent in how we treat people, and that is how we show our faith. And again, this is it, it's all about this. James is all about showing your faith through your actions and your deeds and how you work. Um, as you go through and you get to the end from verse uh, 8 through 13, if you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. 
He is referring to the Old Testament law, but when he uses the royal, that definer of royal law, he's talking about the law as taught by Jesus Christ. The law that was brought to us through the example of Jesus Christ and how he lives his, how he lived his life here on this earth. And at this point, he had, he had obviously, he had already ascended. That royal law. And he, and he comes back. This is from the Old Testament, from the first five books of the Bible. I think it's found in, in Deuteronomy. I know it's found in Deuteronomy once. I think it's found somewhere else. But, you know, to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus is asked, what is the greatest commandment? And it, it appears in Matthew, Luke, and I think it's Matthew, Luke, and, and, and Mark, all three of those Gospels that appears in there. Um, and, and it says, you know, he, he's asked, what is the greatest commandment? He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law is contained in those two things. Those are the greatest. Um, and then somebody pops off, you know, in, in, in <laughs> back. You know, sometimes you just ask one more question than you should. It says, well, who's my neighbor? Now, when that was written, originally when that, that command was given, we're talking about in the Old Testament, they're talking about towards other Jews. But Jesus took it and they asked, well, who's my neighbor? You know, trying to, let's get that question. Let's go one, you know, just one question too far. And Jesus tells us to, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Everybody's your neighbor. Everybody is our neighbor. So we should love everyone as we love ourselves. And as we get to the end, he's talking about forgiveness and showing mercy. And, and that is the, that's sometimes the hardest form of love that we can, that we can show. It's hard to forgive. I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm guilty. It's hard to forgive people. It's hard to show mercy because we're built in with this. I, th I think that human beings are just built with. We want justice, but that justice is coming through judgment, and, and judgment, as it says in, in verse thirteen, judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. It is in showing forgiveness and mercy that we show love to other people. And he uses two extreme examples in there too. You know, you should not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You know, if you if you break one part of it, you've broken it all. There's no difference in sin. There's no level of sin. It's all the same. In God's eyes, it's still a separation between us and Him. That that wall that we build with sin. But adultery and murder that's that's two things that are definitely not loving your neighbor as you love yourself. You know, you you just don't do that. You, would you do that to yourself? No. So you don't do it to other people. And it, and it comes down to show love equally to everybody. Be consistent in the love that you show to everyone. Because none of us is better than any other. Really, we're not. Um, some of us act better. Some of us behave better. I'm not going to say we don't. <laughs> I'm used to the one who's misbehaving. So that's just how it goes. Treat everybody the same. Because God loves all of us the same, and we are all our neighbors. Don't show favoritism. I thought about this too, just to, to leave you with this. Um, the, 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 the gospel writer, the, the disciple, John, John, the son of Zebedee, brother of, of James, not this James, the other James, um, wrote the gospel of John. And in that, you know, there's, there's, there's a sign of how we are ourselves. We want favoritism. We want to be somebody's favorite. As he writes in there and as he refers to himself, every time he refers to himself in the, in the Gospel of John, the writer, John the Revelator, <laughs> he says, the one who Jesus loved. And it always strikes me as he's saying, you know, God loves you, but I'm his favorite. There was a t-shirt one time and I kicked myself that I didn't buy it. I should have, but it said, God loves you, but I'm his favorite. We want to be the favorite. Uh, so much to the point that the mother of, of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, their mother comes to Jesus and says, hey, when you enter your kingdom, I want one of my boys to sit on your right hand and one of my boys to sit on your left hand. They want those favored positions. I want to be a favorite. I want to be somebody's favorite. I want somebody to treat me like they're my favorite. I, I, I want somebody to treat me like I'm their favorite, I should say. But I also, you know, God teaches us, and I... It, we treat everybody the same. We treat everybody with the same level of favoritism. I am God's favorite, and so are you. We're all God's favorite, and we should treat each other accordingly. Um, you know, favorites aren't always the same, but it's exactly equal the same. You know, um, but you know what I, you, you know what I'm getting at. So, 
That's what he's teaching here. Just be consistent. Be consistent in your walk. Be consistent in applying God's love to other people, the great love that God gave you. Be consistent in applying that and giving that to other people. It's simple as that. And, and that's what that, that's the first part of chapter 2 of James. I thank you guys for watching. It's going to loop back over. It's going to watch again. So those of you coming in at 6, uh, you're going to be able to see this whole thing again. Love you guys. Can't wait till we can get back together and see one another again face to face. Um, if you need me, give me a call. I'm here at the church uh, most of the time. I, I, of course, my phone is always on me, and, and usually I answer it. Sometimes I don't hear it. Sometimes it, it's on vibrate, and I don't really get it. But um, love you guys. I'll see you later. Love one another.